Yeah. Hello, my friends. I would like for you just to, to concentrate one moment in this wonderful image and this scripture. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. We live in, a, in an age, in a period in which there is a lot of fear, fear, fear for the present, fear for the future. And that's why it's so important to go to the Bible, to the King James Bible, and read the word of truth, rightly divided, and get this kind of encouragement directly from our Lord, who's telling us if we are saved by grace through faith, having believed in the gospel of Christ, that he has not given us the spirit of fear. We don't need to fear. We can enter in the glorious presence of God continually, because actually he lives in us now by his spirit, realizing that he's given us a spirit of power, of love, and of a sound mind. Now, many people nowadays get confused concerning the gospel because they think about the kingdom gospel in which you need to uh, repent of your sin, confess your sin, get water baptized, and follow Jesus into the kingdom. But this is not possible. The Lord Jesus Christ is risen from the dead and now is sitting on the right hand of God. So, honestly, it's not possible to follow him into the kingdom which has been postponed and the gospel is here how Christ died for our sins according to scriptures he was buried and rose again the third day and this you can find in 1 Corinthians 15 3, 4, 3, 4. what happens then when the Lord has done this you know what happened well this is really fantastic Let's talk about the death and burial resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. As we just read in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 4, his death, his burial, his resurrection. How do we relate to this? Well, his death, you see, reconciliation, the sin of mankind paid in full once and for all. 2 Corinthians 5 19, to wit, the God was in Christ reconciled the world unto himself not imputing their trespasses unto them look at this here this man this young man is, was 33 on that cross it doesn't make any sense unless unless we understand that the scene of the world was put on him the sin of the world the sin of mankind paid in full once and for all to wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself not imputing dread trespasses unto them then the burial the burial talks also about reconciliation because the sin of mankind put out of the sight of God you see we read in Hebrews <coughs> 9 26 for them must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world. But now, once in the end of the world, as he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. God at this moment, actually since his death, burial, resurrection, the death, burial, resurrection of Christ, is not imputing sin, but is offering grace, peace, salvation, forgiveness, acceptance in Christ and because of Christ so you see the death is very important the sin debt has been paid the burial is very important the sin has been taken out of the way and this re resurrection is so important justification the righteous righteousness of God freely available to all Romans 4 25 was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification the moment you believe this glorious gospel, the death, burial, resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, you are reconciled to God, you are accepted in the beloved, and God imputes righteousness to you. Instead of imputing sin, which has been imputed to Christ, He imputes righteousness to you. I know that some of you talk about baptism, but I have a verse here that should help you to understand. Paul said 
Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, the gospel of Christ, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. You see, the moment you go through the ritual, the rite, the ordinance, okay, of water baptism, you identify yourself with the nation of Israel, but you are not part of the nation of Israel. If you are saved by grace through faith, now you are part of the body of Christ. You are a member of the body of Christ. So this water is not at all significant for you. Because this water, if you put trust in this water, like you get baptized in water now, in the ocean, in the bathtub of the, the, the swimming pool of the church, whatever it is, makes the, Christ, the cross of Christ of none effect. You understand? On the other hand, the death, burial, resurrection of Christ is uh, something that happened 2,000 years ago. You and I were not there. But when this happened, God considered you and me crucified with him and resurrected with him. Those things won't get you into heaven. Good works, baptism, church, religion, Sunday school, charity, money, mass, communion, parents, political affiliation, denomination, friends, positive thinking, and just being a good person. These things actually won't get you to heaven. But the things that will get into to heaven are not things. Is one person. is Jesus Christ. Do you know him? Have you fully trusted in him and only him for your salvation? If you haven't, you really should. When should you accept salvation? Let's see this clock. Oh, now, 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 <laughs> now. Twelve times now. Tomorrow is not pros promised to anyone. This is a very short video, just to encourage you to believe the gospel of Christ. How it, Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and he was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Bye-bye.